Hello, my name's Robert Adams from Papercrafts Limited, and what I'd like to do today is run you through our latest addition to the All Occasion Dies, is our new oval trellis die. And so what I'm gonna do on this demonstration is take you through using the template, etc., and uh, show you some hints and tips, because in this one, we have a plate, a shimming plate included in the kit, and I'm gonna show you why. So this is the kit itself. This is what you're going to get. You're gonna get your die, just flip it over. We've got our template, our shimming die, which is an A5 one there, and full instructions. But of course, if you're watching the video, you probably skip those and come straight to this. So without further ado, I'm gonna run through, as I said, and talk you through it. And the first step we're going to do is actually draw up the stepper card itself. Now, if you're new to stepper cards, let me just show you a couple of examples here uh, that I've got. Now we've used these with our trellis ribbon cutter and they're very sort of quite delicate, uh, well they look delicate, very fancy. So there's just a few samples to show you there, the sort of thing we can do with it. You can embellish, but this is the main part that we're focusing on. And again, I'll just reach over here. These are my working ones. So uh, forgive me if they're a little bit, a little bit tatty. I don't know if that's gonna show up on the camera, but this in essence is what we're gonna look at today. This is everything you've got in the kit and this is what it's going to look like when you make it up. And then of course you can embellish it further if you want to. In a separate video, I'm going to show you then how to apply our trellis ribbon to create this effect on the card as well. Last but not least, while we're looking at samples, and again, this is just a working one, but you can make an A5 card as well out of it. And you'll notice that this always stays within the card. And what I would do normally is either put a little bit of tape to hold it in because you can see it moving there. A little bit of tape to hold it into position or have my uh, insert paper kind of stuck down to hold it in there anyway. But I favor the Magi tape, the clear Magi tape, and I would have just stuck that in. But that aside, um, it shows you the potential of what you can do with this die. So there we go. I'll pop those to one side. I'm just going to bring up the template now, and then pop that down on to my card. Now the card I'm gonna use is 250 GSM Super Smooth. And I think that's probably just about the right weight to work with because we're going to have this die running through our machine and the experienced crafters out there are gonna look and say, oh, that's gonna be cutting in the middle of my machine. I'm gonna show you how we overcome that shortly. But the first step, popping that all to one side, saving the excitement for a little bit later, just rest the template down on to your A5 card, like so. Line it up. Now, if you want to, you could pop a little bit of tape just to hold it into position. Um, again, with your tape, keep it low tack because it will just pull up the surface. I'm just tacking mine up here because if I do ruin it, that's the back of the card anyway, although we would be using that for the message. So, glasses on. A couple of ways of doing this with the template, but I'd just like to show you the method that I use. When I, because we're folding, and this is what I call construction lines in here, what I'm going to do is just work to the top of the template. So it's quite wide here to allow your pencil in. And there's a, probably a good two millimeters difference. So I'm working at the top line there, going to the top, again, popping that in and popping that in there. That means I know that they're equidistance from each other. They'll be right. And if I did one line here, one at the top, and one down there, you can sort it out, but it's better to keep it all in the same position. So again, on the top, on the top, and on the top there. Um, now we've got the oval bit here. And again, you've got a choice, but because we are working on the top line there, I would suggest what we do is again, just go into the top there and run round. So I'm now using the inner edge, which gives me a little bit more meat on my card and then dropping down like so and coming round like that to join up where I started. So again, on here, I'm just going to 
follow that edge there. So that's the method that I would use, but that as ever is just my serving suggestion. But this way, we're kind of keeping everything where it should be. Okay, and that's pretty much everything done there. So we can now take that off and just pull it aside. Make sure you've got all your lines on. If you haven't, line it back up again and just redraw them. It's not too critical, but because we've got folds, we want to try and keep everything as neatly as possible. So there we go. That's our basic <coughs> template for our stepper card put on and drawn on. So really, the next stage to do is, I think, start with the die. Because we could cut all of this out, but then we've got bits of loose paper going through the machine. So I favour now keeping this like this, cutting it out, and then, at the last stage, cutting everything out. So our die is here. It's a big old die. And we're going to be asking of a lot of it on our machines. The first one here, you've got your guidelines, and they are just that, guidelines. We're going to just try and keep it nice and upright, keeping that at about 90 degrees, because we're going to overcut, flip it over and cut the other one, rest it into position there, and then we're going to tack it down. I've got a little bit of tape here. Now, this part here is waste, so I've got some nice tacky tape and I'm not going to bother to detack it because that part there is definitely going to be cut away. And that will hold the die in nicely. Because at some stage we're going to want to just have a look at this and see if it's cut. So we are going to be moving this in and out. As you do more of these, you'll find you'll get the feel of it and you'll cut it and you'll see what I'm talking about. But for the moment, um, I'm just trying to show you the easy start off method. I'm just trying to detack this little bit of tape here because I don't think it would do any harm. Now this is overboard really, just put a tiny bit in there. Um, you can or you can't, I'm gonna leave that off because that could mark the surface there, but I know that's pretty strong. Okay, so that's now ready for cutting. You need an A4 machine for this. It's certainly not going to go through one of your smaller ones. Now this is where our shim, we, we supply a shim with this because as you probably well know, on my machine, in fairness, the best cutting edge happens down here and here. And that leaves us an awful lot of dye there in a, what is technically a weak part of the cutting on the machines. So what we can do is use our shim here. And that will add pressure to this and pop it through the machine. Now, a couple of ways of doing this, so bear with me, because I'm going to show you both methods, um, but I'm gonna cut it just the once. So, it really depends how good your machine is on all of this, how old, etc., etc. So, first off, let's just pick this up, and I'm gonna pop it onto my cutting plate. Now, I'm using the Grand Caliber for this, um, which, Many of you have got, it's a machine a lot of people like, but I think it's fair to say it is in the cheap end of the market and I know for a fact mine does not like to cut there. However, I can as a testament show you this is the card I made with this machine, so it can be done. Okay, so uh, two methods. The first one is this. If you've got a pretty good machine, um, go for method A, which I'm running through now. That's down on my plate, that down there. And then I just pop without a bit of tape on it, my shim over here, like so. And that will then cut through the machine like this and it's not putting anything onto the paper there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with this method. Oops, and pop that through my machine. Now I know that my machine's a little bit weak and it's probably unlikely that this will work properly but I'm just going to show you if you've got a stronger machine or probably an Ian Boss or something with a better plate you'll probably be okay however if you're cutting this for the first time I would suggest that you try this technique first I'm just going to bring that back because it doesn't do any harm to go through a couple of times run that back there Okay, now one thing to make 
a note off. In fact, I should. If you pop your template there, you'll see that you really want to make sure we've covered all the area. So I come up. If you pop it to here, like so, and I put my template on, that bit of plate there is just on the cusp of cutting the top of the die. So we want to come in about 15 centimeters like that, just to make sure it's done. Um, Again, I suppose you could pop a little bit of tape on that if you wanted to. I'm just going to run it through once more because I think I'll let that move down. So in it goes. Feel that pop, as it were. Come back. Run that through that away. Chunk. There we go. Right. Now this is where it all gets a bit messy. <laughs> Once you know what you're doing. So... When you know what you're doing, um, you'll be able to run through. We wouldn't normally at this stage do what I'm about to do, which is lift things up, have a look and see how it's going on. But that's what I'm going to do. And you can see here, I've pretty well cut everything. It's just slightly, and it happens because of this machine, it can't cut. It leaves sometimes a little patch like that. So the first thing to do is just clear off all of the mess. I'm just going to pop that onto the floor because we don't want these bits getting trapped underneath or causing any problems for us if we can help it so um, I said normally at this stage you wouldn't bother to to take the die out because I said we don't want to have anything giving us problems there okay what this says to me is my machine's okay <coughs> but it's not cutting as nicely as I wanted it to. Sorry, I'm just being a bit fastidious there. Okay, let's come back to this. I, I said bear with me because I wouldn't normally as leave all the bits. This is like your first test to see how good your machine is. I know mine isn't cutting very well, so what can I do about that? It's pretty well done it. It's not bad, but it's not perfect, obviously. So again, and what we can do now, pop our plate on there, and we want to put pressure on that bit there that hasn't quite cut. So we're going to put our shim down here. Now what this is going to do is, in engineering terms we hope, put a lot of pressure here, not so much here. So that pressure will now, where's our cutting edges here? We're hoping to transfer it to here, if that makes sense. So if I just move this back, you'll see now where this is in relation to my die. That's the bit we want to kind of give a little bit more oomph to. So again, I'm going to pop that on there. I seem to have picked up a few strays along the way and pop that through. Okay, getting this as close to that edge as I can um, and just run that through. So that should be creating a little bit more pressure for me. Now sometimes, again, sometimes you'll get better pressure there than you do there. It gets up to your individual machine. So I'm going to pop this through here and just try it. Again, I'm just showing you, once you know your machine, you'll say, oh, well, I'll always cut it with it this end closer to the handle. That's where it goes. I'll just run that through there. And I'm going to have to hold the plate. You can I have a habit of letting go and realise I haven't cut it all and run it through. Now, I'm making this look like there's a lot of passes through the machine, but it's just, again, bear with me. I'm just trying to show you worst case scenario as you're starting off with the die. And if your machine isn't as new, that's pretty old. Now, fingers crossed, when you come to this stage, you look at it and you go, brilliant, that's cut it. Everything's done, that's sorted. So I can, at this stage, Clear everything down and then gently, I say gently, it doesn't matter if I rip it because that's now waste. Pull that away from there. I'll just pop that to one side. Whoops. And now what I'm going to do is just pop those last ones out there. So you can see this is the method I would use if my machine isn't very good. Can I show you method two? What we do to get even more pressure and on our plate is to actually pop this down 
like this straight onto there and sandwich it between it now i know on my machine if i do that i get a perfect cut right the way through okay so why aren't i doing that all the time there is a drawback to that method and i can show you here is that as this goes through you're putting pressure on it can crease the card so what i do if i'm popping this on is just line it up here because you're not going to see this line it drops behind and i've still got some pressure there so i'm going to use my template here and just come slightly back off the line there and then this will drop below so when this goes through any creases from here will be out of our vision when we make the stepper card so it's rather than just popping it there um, which is another method you can just come back because we've got to put a crease line there but it could put a mark in that pillar which you will see so again to reiterate just come back a little bit from the line there and pop it through and then you can do the same process cut through now i know on my machine if i do that it actually cuts perfectly first time um, so that's one method it's a little bit harder to get through as it adds more pressure and if you've got a really old machine and it's nearly done it and it will nearly done it um, do it sorry <laughs> uh, again using that same technique pop this down here like so and take the last bit off there but you do run the risk of a tiny little line appearing there if you're not careful so again if you're going to do that line it up in the corner and line it up with the part here and then at worst you've got a little line appearing but that's at the back of the card and it is only slight this is me being really fussy with my card making and then pop that in and run it through the machine okay so i've got to cut the other one I'll, I'll might as well do that for real on this one and you'll see the difference in the cut and the pressure so second cut what do we do for that let's just move that out of the way and actually i'm going to show you here as well so the first thing i'm going to do give a tap whoops big tap and get the last well two little tiny bits that were left over in there okay so so lining up now, this is what we do to get everything to line up and cut again. You can see we've got our circles there and our line there. And what we want to do is just lock this die back into position. And I don't know if you can see that has dropped in. I can see it in there. I don't want to overcut that circle. That one's lined up there. That one's lined up there. You know what? And I can't move. The, whoop. I'm really pushing. As I say, I can't move that die. Oh, yes, I can. But there you go. I can feel it locking into position like so. And again, I can tape this down now. And I'm just going to... There we go. Just pop that tape in there. And that's ready to recut now. So we're going to go through the same method but this time i'm going to show you the other method but i would repeat the same whatever process you do repeat it for for both sides so let me just very carefully lift that over you can see now on the camera that's actually in position there that's what we want it to be you'll feel it lock in you know it's right okay now i've done that on the flat here as it were sometimes it helps just to hold it to feel it in your hand to feel it lock in other times like that so there's a lot of area and you can just slide it and you'll just know uh, if you've done anything like that before you'll you'll get the feel of it okay so let me uh, show you method two here and what i'm going to do for that is just simply now and i'm going to pop this ah, sorry no i'm going to do it this way that's what I said I was going to do, wasn't it? So I trained myself to repeat the same process again, but I'm going to show you this one. So I'm lining that up with the line there. Um, just roughly. I suppose you could put a bit of low tack tape if you wanted at the back, but uh, I'm just going to just trust the luck that it doesn't move too much. Hold my sandwich as it were there. And again, just run this. through here you'll feel that come up and off over the template um, 
I was talking about the line on the paper. If you were to actually mark here and say you don't go beyond, providing you don't drop off the template, you won't actually put a crease in anything there. Uh, I've got which way it's going then. <laughs> Let's go backwards. Um, I think you get the gist of what I'm saying here. You can play around with it and just see. Now, um, moment of truth on this one. <coughs> I said my machine, actually my machine cuts, so I should have turned it round. And if I just show you here, perfect example of mine misbehaving. I'm just gonna get rid of all these bits because I don't want them dropping back in. It's, you know, it's very, very nearly there, but it's not quite. So, clear that down, pop it back on. And mine actually cuts better towards the handle, but um, so, uh, I, you could turn it round either way. So using that same method again, I would now just place my template like, oh, sorry, I want to come over this side to put the pressure on here. So again, line that up there, lining it up. You see, I haven't really created any marks on the back. And pop it through there. All being well, this will now cut properly for me. The problem is, as I said, we're cutting the biggest area right where this really doesn't want to go, which is the middle of our cutting machine. run that back through. Now the first method worked quite well. You can see it's it's just horses for courses on the pressure on these and that's now cut perfectly there. So if I again just remove that, remember whoops those are waste but we don't want to tear it onto there. And if I'm just going to pop these plates to one side now. So we're ready for the next stage is just to get all these bits out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, just to show you everything. This is the tricky bit, just to show you that everything's come out there. So I'll go on, get rid of these last few bits, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how we do the folding. So everything's out now, you can see our, our cutting there, um, and that, that's with all the methods explained, so you can decide which works best for you. Um, in retrospect for me, I would, found putting it on the top was probably as easy without worrying about any of the lines appearing uh, when you cut but you play around with it and see how and what works best for you. Next stage now is just to put in our crease lines because we're going to fold this into our stepper card so I'm going to use my tool here, scoring tool and just put a nice little line into those like so, and at the top here, so one there, and try and keep that nice and parallel, and one there. Now, with this one, we don't cut, we don't put a fold line, we don't touch it. <laughs> However, this one at the back here has to fold with us, and at this stage, you can see my lines are oh, a little bit shaky there, but they're okay. So I'm just gonna go midway in between because we're gonna fold this and just put a crease line in there like so. And that's nice and parallel with that because that's gonna fold down as well. Okay, they're all in position. So now we cut out the waste and the waste, I'll just scribble is all these bits here. They're the bits that you cut out. So actually we've got two straight lines now because of the way the template works, this would, if I just show you here, that's gonna go up to there, and that's gonna to go to that line there, and give us a nice 90 degree where that joins. So that you'll need to cut down from there, and then obviously down to your score line there. If I just show you on this one, and down to your score line there. Okay. Right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this out now, um, and then we'll come back and have a look in a moment. But I'll just show you this technique. So what I do first of all is my two vertical lines just come to there, spin that round, and we'll do that one there. Again, going up to my mark to there like that. And now to show you what you mustn't cut is there. <laughs> Do not cut 
there. So what I suggest is you just come to here like so. I'm going to come back to there. You can see the little bit of gap here. So with a freehand cut, just pop it down like that. And that bit there. And there we go. We can see that coming out. And then just by hand, you're going to follow that curve and come round to the score line. And again, we don't cut that bit there. And I'm just going to nip that away like so. And again, to the score line and just pull that round and up to my crease there. And carefully cut that out. You probably notice me tearing it slightly, being a bit bullish. Okay, so remember, golden rule, don't cut there, and don't cut there, and you don't fold this line here either. No scoring, just leave that one well alone. Okay, next step is to fold this all together. Now I find these stepper cards, to be honest, a little bit, not fiddly, um, well, for me they are, even at the best of times, without all this lovely decoration and everything on going on here. Um, and I find a ruler helps me just put some creases in. You can bend it one way, then the other. It's really up to you. But I, I'm going to turn this over and just see where my marks are in there and just begin to crease it and then pinch it with my fingers like so just put a little crease into there and then the same again with this just pop it down and crease it like so and at this stage you can see it's all very curly as we crease it and hold it got this curve on it now this is all going to straighten out but don't worry again this is on the written instructions it probably make more sense now it's curly don't worry so the next thing to do uh, i just work my way down so this is going to fold back towards us like so and again, get that crease underway and then give it a little squeeze. We can flatten it and make it really nice and sharp crease-wise at the end. And then this one's going to come forward on that side. And the same again there, like so. Okay, so we've now got our card looking like that. And really the magic now happens as we just pull it over like so everything will be nicely in position now we've used a template and our lines might not be you know majorly accurate but you have got a little bit of wiggle room here sometimes i find i'm going to show you here and this is you know, quite honest in the crafting i'm out by a couple of millimeters there two millimeters now in reality whoops i've popped a bit of a mark on there uh, if i pop that down on the desk on my work surface that that's touching okay i don't really have a problem with that i don't think that's causing a problem it's it's sitting nicely it's doing what it should do but if if you wanted to you you could perhaps cut that little bit off but i don't think that as i said is a problem for us it does what it's supposed to do and there we go that's our card it's as simple as that so with the folding take your time now that's just my method for folding these these cards. You might find that you always prefer to start there and get that line in and work backwards, it's up to you. But that, as I said, is my sort of serving suggestion for you. Then at this stage, when I've got this far, what I would do next is get another piece of card so I don't mark the surface and just either with a bone folder or with a ruler, just put a little bit of pressure on and get some lovely sharp creases going on there like so and that hasn't damaged the surface at all stand it up and i've got a lovely card to work with and then from here you can go on and decorate it it looks very delicate um, and it does take some of the strength out of the card but it, it's it's pretty strong and if i can just come back show you some examples here um, Again, ignore this, that's for another video, that's with extra dies if you want to go that far. You can see that it, you can build it up, put your flowers on, and it really is quite, quite sturdy. Last but not least, if I can just come back to my A5 card here and just show you this. Again, we can use the same die to make a lovely A5 card. Ignore that bit, 
flopping about there. I'd put a little bit of tape in it to hold it in position. I'd use clear Magi tape. I would use clear Magi tape if I had some with me. I haven't, so I'm just going to, for the sake of argument, just pop a little bit of masking tape on there, stop it flopping around. You can see how that instantly holds it in. And that, again, is, I think, the basis for a lovely card that we could make. It's so much you could do that. Wedding cards, birthday cards, anniversary, special cards. It does look lovely. A point to note that this die is designed to make and work with the template to make a beautiful card like this. You can also make cards like this. What it won't do is fully cut it out. It's not designed to be a topper. That said, there's nothing to stop you at this stage if you want to just either cutting a straight line or just emulating some of the curves to physically cut this out and stick it down onto a card if you want to. But I leave that to you. Really, that's what we're aiming to create out of it. So it's a lovely card. It doesn't take too long to make, but you will have to, with your trusty shim, you know, work with your plate and your die a little bit. Clear some of my mess out there. You're going to need that and you're going to need your shim and you probably remember what we're trying to do is when that's in position like so is increase our pressure we're technically with the shim we're moving where it likes to cut in the mid towards the edges it then just pushes more pressure down on this bit to cut that which is the hardest and biggest amount to cut in the center of what is notoriously the worst cutting area on the machines. Okay, so that's everything in the kit, and that's how you put it all together, and uh, that's what you can make out of it as the end product. So I hope this video gives you an oversight and the confidence to have a go and do this. Um, it does mean, uh, on, on average, I go backwards and forwards, so one, two, three, four passes on the machine per side maximum. Now this was worst case scenario with a quite an old machine that you know isn't the best of cutters even on a good day, but we've got this out, you've seen it here. I've done it for you live as it were to show you. And using that shims and everything, you'll be able to do it. Now you might find that you pop this down, cut it through it's cut perfectly for you in that case one or two passes back and forwards and you're done so if that's the case remember on the first time you ever use the die just see what works best for you then you know for, for future reference okie dokie and there may be some machines that are brilliant cutting in the center and then you don't need the shim at all um, but there's lots of uses for this and that i'm going to talk in another video so Rounding up, that's everything you need to know to make this card. And um, if you're interested in taking it a little bit further, there's another tutorial video where I'm using our trellis ribbon cutter if you want to, to take it to one stage further. But I said this makes for a lovely card like this. And of course, you can then decorate to taste. I hope this tutorial's given you the confidence to have a go. It really is a lovely die to work with this. And I just think, you know, the results look fantastic. I love the stepper cards. Um, and this is actually from one of the original designs I did all oh, about five years ago, now five, six years ago on the CD-ROMs. Um, and I just did like the oval, but I always found cutting by hand, it was never quite as nice as perhaps you can get with a lovely mechanical cut like this. Okay, I again just you know watch the video, don't panic, take your time, and you'll be producing lovely cards in no time at all. Take care, see you soon. Bye bye.